Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to Art of Awakening and welcome if you're new. My name is Ona Christie. I'm a visionary artist and energy worker. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the energies of the total solar eclipse coming up in April 2023 on the 19th and 20th, depending where you are in the world. It's a really powerful portal that we're moving into. So I'll be sharing what I'm receiving around that as well as what we can do to assist in moving through this portal with grace and ease. Okay, so to begin, just a few words about eclipse energies in general. So solar eclipse is going to happen when the moon moves between the earth and the sun which will obstruct our view of the sun, right? It blocks the light from, from coming to us. And so this is a, a really powerful time because what it does is it brings up the shadow. Okay, and so there's a lot of traditions that, that really warn against eclipses because it, it can bring up a lot of stuff, right? And, you know, blocking the light, but you can really see it as an illumination of shadow um, if you're approaching it in a way that is conscious, right? Because when we can't see something, that's when it's likely to be problematic. But, but sometimes blocking out the light is it makes it actually easier to see what's in the shadows. For example, when I was in college, in my uh, third year of college, I lived off campus, just off campus, right, in a, in a college housing. And I had to walk from campus sometimes after dark you know, to, to this house that was kind of isolated and, and the path was really well lit. But with the bright lights, I, I couldn't see what was past the lights and the shadows, right? And and there was one night where the lights went out and I found that I could actually see much, much better what was there and I felt actually safer at that point when the light wasn't there. But of course not as safe that I, as I felt during the day when 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 the light was was fully present. So sometimes getting into an eclipse season um, is a good time to just kind of sit back and allow the the light to disappear for a while and understanding that in seeing into the shadows that's often when we can see things that we wouldn't in, in other periods of time. And that can ultimately, even though they may not be things that we want to see, <laughs> they, it's just the knowledge of, of that being there lets you plan and, and act in ways that um, address whatever's there, okay? So um, this is a really interesting total solar eclipse. It's going to be visible in Southeast Asia, Australia, and parts of Antarctica, Indonesia. Um, but even if you're in a place in the world where you're not going to be able to view the eclipse, you're still going to feel those energies. And you don't necessarily even have to view it. Um, you know, some spiritual traditions say just to, to stay inside during those times. This particular eclipse is actually a really powerful one for a couple of reasons. One, because a total so it's a total solar eclipse, right? So it's it's going to, for a period of time in certain parts of the world, block all the light. And in certain parts of its pathway, at, at certain times, it's going to appear as an annular solar eclipse, which is where the, the moon goes right in front of the sun and you can see the whole ring of fire. So we're gonna get that ring of fire effect and in this uh, eclipse cycle. And then, also, it's in the fire sign of Aries, and it's this, the second new moon in Aries right now. Aries, of course, being this, this time of new beginnings, um, and the new moon also being the time of new beginnings, right? And this, as I explained in my April energies video, this is really the beginning of a great big new cycle that's going to take us through the next couple of years, right? It's a, it's a new cycle starting up. So what that means is that it's a really, really powerful portal, okay? It's it's ushering in something new. And so even though as an eclipse, it may bring up some uncomfortable energies, these are probably energies that we're going to be then able to work with and work through over the next cycle. 
Okay, so what do we do with that? Well, I tuned into these energies and I asked my guidance. And so they gave me, a, um, I have an Akashic message. And then I also have this very kind of strange painting that's developing <laughs> that also has information about this eclipse portal that we're in here. Okay, so um, let me start with the Akashic message. So here I asked to please explain the energies of the upcoming total solar eclipse, April 19th through 20th. Here's what they told me. Please know that the healing impulse on this planet is very strong and is being strongly activated at this time. This is a time of active intervention. You can greatly assist by opening your minds to the possibility of receiving healing. By standing firm in your awareness that healing of the planet is not only possible, it is inevitable. Gaia has a very strong will to live. She has called for and is receiving a strong dose of uplifting light energy at this time. This is being channeled into her field primarily through those beings who are capable of holding and transmitting light human and otherwise, including many of the plant and animal species on the planet at this time. Okay, so that's the first part of the message. I just want to comment on that, and then I'll give you, um, I think at the end of this video, they gave me another part of this message, which really will give us ideas on how we can actually move through this portal. Um, okay, so what they're saying is that we're receiving a lot of light energy right now, okay? And this eclipse is going to be uh, assisting in activating that. And it feels to me, just kind of reading this over again, that it's like we've been receiving huge, huge amounts of light. And what the eclipse is doing is just, it's just kind of like, we got this big light treatment, and it's sort of shutting off the light to assist us in integrating right now what we've just received over the past couple months so that we can move um, into this next cycle with these energies um, a little bit more integrated so that we can move in and, and, and utilize what we've just received, right? So that the healing can take place. Um, so that's why it may be really important to lay low during this eclipse. And we'll get to that later when, we, when I get to their suggestions. Okay, um, and then the other thing is there was a lot of blue ray energy that I'm feeling coming in and um, thunder beings, especially the blue ray is the first ray of light and it has a lot to do with um, like spiritual law and power, right? So will and power. Blue ray energy can be really, really intense, but it's also very, very protective. So if you think of Archangel Michael as being a, a very principal blue ray being, you'll, you'll get an idea of the kind of power that we're dealing with and the kind of power that is being activated within us, right? If we're willing to receive this kind of light and those kind of light activations, um, you know, the, the blue ray within us that's being activated right now and that's what we're being asked to integrate at this time okay so which brings me to this painting so when I started feeling into these energies and I felt like okay well, I was drawn to do a painting this time around and it, it, it this was one that it it's got layers underneath it so the first thing I was drawn to painting was actually like a field of tulips and but then it, it, it this painting keeps shifting and changing right so so just briefly tulip energy again it's that new beginnings it's it, but it's really strong kind of root chakra it was red bright red tulips and the thing about tulips is that they spring up in the springtime after the long winter they've they've held that life force and they just bring that life force right up out of the earth Okay, so this is something that, that is within each one of us that we can bring forward very strongly, right? It, um, it's, it's available to us at this time. And then the other thing about tulips is that they are nourishing for the eyes, right? The beauty, but it's also they're edible. The root is edible. <laughs> so like in a pinch, if it's an emergency, you can actually eat tulip roots. But it's like that dual... Um, 
dual nourishment, right? It's this, this healing energy, both for the mind and spirit and for the body, right? Um, so there's a lot of just big life force energy that's available to us that's being activated right now, being activated deep in the earth and springing forward at this time. Okay, so the, that was the first layer of this painting. The next layer that came up, and I wish I'd gotten photos of these, but I was just too busy working at it. Um, the next layer was, it was like water and like a duck, <laughs> duck energy. I have a story about ducks that I'll be telling in a video pretty soon. I'll be doing a video on, on, on duck spirit animal. Um, but I think what's coming forward a lot with, with this one was just kind of like getting your ducks in a row. And also that idea idea of water off a duck's back, right? There's going to be stuff coming at us and allowing kind of just that, that waterproofing <laughs> aspect. Water, especially being the emotional body, right? So just prepping your emotional body. And that's part of this blue ray of, of kind of protection. So I'm just asking for a sealing and protection of the emotional body at this time, right? Allowing anything that's coming at us emotionally to just run off our backs and which will assist us in just getting our decks in the row and being prepared for this next cycle. And then finally, I, I, I started uh, the, the final layer here. And I don't say, I, I, it probably isn't a final because it feels like this is, this painting may, is going to evolve more. And so it may end up being completely different. Um, but just this kind of snapshot of, of time here, um, again, the blue ray, the blue light coming in, this, um, it's almost like a, sort of the beginning of a Sri Yantra um, kind of image, or uh, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the Merkaba with the two triangles coming in. And then right here where they converge, there's this point and the skull showed up, right? And it's like right at the pineal gland right there. And it looks like there's a couple of a skulls behind it, almost whispering in the ear. And it's sort of like, I feel like this is a really eerie image and it's a little bit uncomfortable image. Um, but it, it it's no wonder because that's what eclipse energy is about. It's about bringing stuff up that's uncomfortable that we don't want to look at and that may have been hidden, right? Um, and so when I felt into this image and started conversing with it or dialoguing with the image itself, um, it was ancestor energy, really, okay? So the skull, you know those crystal skulls, right, that you can get in crystal shops and stuff? And I've, uh, I used to always feel like really, it, there's some weird energy around them sometimes, right? And, um, but what I'm really told is that this, they can be really um, vehicles of light, right? Um, the skull is where we house a lot of just our our in ability to to bring in the the, the guiding intuition, right? So that's where the pineal gland is. It's where the pituitary gland is. It's like these kind of the, the, the master nervous system um, shows up in the, in the skull. And it's also kind of our, our link to the ancestors is, is the skull. Because when we think of ancestors, usually we are thinking about the skull, right? Those who have passed. And the skull is kind of this, this magical vessel, right? For communicating with ancestral energies. And these sometimes ancestral energies it can carry dark energy, right? Because we're here in part to assist in healing the bloodlines and healing whatever has happened through the ancestors. And, and you know, us in, in this lifetime, we have this beautiful opportunity to assist in that, but we have to be able to communicate with those ancestral energies and be able to face whatever happened, right? And bring it to light. So that's a lot about what this energy portal is about right now. And so when I see this, I see that there's this um, kind of this blue ray, but there's also this really dark blue ray coming in and, and helping to illuminate whatever is dark about the ancestors. Um, the blue ray right now is assisting in bringing that to light, right? In a powerful way. If we can keep our vibration high, then, and, and, and keep ourselves really grounded, 
this eclipse may be a time where we can actually open up and, and listen and be aware or be given understanding about what may have happened in our past in in the far distant past right and to help to heal that and so what i'm seeing is these dark skulls kind of whispering they're they're actually relinquishing they're giving up some of the deep dark secrets of the past that have been hidden that need to come up into light and so i think one thing that that some of us may be called to do at this time is to really listen and open up and and it, it takes strength okay because th there is darkness there and it's going to want to bring your vibration down okay so really important is going to be if you do feel like you're being called to receive some of these this information about um you, you know whatever your ancestry or the the human past right it's really really important to shield yourself in light you know before going in call on your angelic guidance call on the light call on whatever ascended masters or you know just just source light to hold you in light and then you'll be able to you know receive these secrets and in a way that um that you can actually take you know and, and transmute whatever darkness and bring it to light in a way that will benefit all of us there may be aspects of this that may want to kind of bring you down be really really aware of that that's why this blue ray surrounding yourself in blue light is one technique that you can use just bringing in the blue light and, and holding yourself in that field um the other thing is there's this reminds me so much of the radiation symbol okay so again powerful energies and 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 again energies that could be like really really destructive but what i'm being given here is that we've got this light within us that's able to take and transmute these right um so whatever's coming at you right now it's coming at you because you're such a powerful being that you can transcend this super important that we are beings of light okay and so i i asked my akasha guides about this painting and the message was really clear i'm going to just read it to you be the light the light is within you you may feel that you are in imperfect being and that's okay allow such thoughts to drift through your mind and away you are the guardian you are the guardian of the light the light shines in a different way through each unique body each unique soul you are the caretaker of this vessel of light of your vessel of light it isn't about you but how clearly you can allow the light within to shine how deeply you honor that unique light within you how beautifully you can sing the part that you have been assigned in the universal choir okay so i love that we said allow the thoughts of being inadequate to drift through your mind in a way that relates back to that water off a duck's back right some of these things as they come up they're going to whisper little things at you they're going to say you're not enough you know what you're doing is stupid they may be whispering oh you're you you know you're you're evil or something like that um, you should just give up you should you know in extreme cases do away with yourself these things this is what's being brought up so that we can bring it to light and you know turn it around because anytime there's those negative little things coming at you and trying to take you down that's power okay that's your own power that has been twisted around and being used against you so what's coming forward here is the blue light the blue ray gives us the power to take it back and when we take it back and we own our own power right if you have this power that's bringing you down that means that the power is there and through light and through holding to the light and through bringing in the light within we can recognize that for what it is it's our shadow Okay, and the deeper the shadow, the brighter the light. And so we can take that shadow and just like the eclipse, right? The, the sun comes back, the moon moves away, and then we have this brilliant light again. 
but it's it's a light that has been you know that's shown us where the shadow is so that we can shine the light even brighter there okay that's this transmutation we can bring it all to light okay and um just a couple things that have caught my attention in such a way over the last couple days that I know that I'm being asked to share these with you that are they don't seem to be related but they are I'm given a very very powerful prompt that these need to be come come forward and shared right now one is the goddess Bridget and um, I did a painting of Bridget at the end of 2018 she is the Celtic goddess of poetry and uh, divination so divine communication which is part of the blue ray right it's the throat chakra um she is a goddess of healing also smithing right um so creating armor um domestic animals and she's a solar or fire goddess if you think of the fire as the way that the solar light is brought through the winter, right? As the sun descends in, in, in the northern part of Great Britain or where the Celts were, um, long cold nights and long very dark nights, right? But the fire being kept in the hearth was the way to keep that light alive through that really dark winter. And then, um, you know, Bridget comes forward as, as uh, an agricultural goddess too in the spring and bringing bring back that new life, just associated with the milk, the new milk from the ewes and the cows, right? So, so again, I think this relates to those tulips coming up, right? That nourishment coming up into the world so that we can spring forward into a new cycle. Um, and there is a transmission that I was first given in January of 2019 from the goddess Bridget. And I want to relay this to you right now because I, I'm just being given a strong prompt. This is really also meant for right now. Here's the message from Bridget. This is the dawning of a bright new age. We have crossed the threshold and are the keepers of a new covenant. It is our job now to tend the fires, to keep the hearth, and to stand guard over newly planted fields, and to stand firm against those who would trample them down. To hold space, to nurture the newly sprouting seeds, to warm them with the sun, and water them with the rain. To cradle within our souls the spark and the seed that is to reestablish light, life into divine love on planet Earth. In this, the old becomes new. We are born again into a new cycle of life and growth. Hold steady, have faith, for though the fields may appear to be barren and blackened with flame, yet below the soil, life quickens. Gaia is very much alive, and we are called to be the stewards of her bounty. Okay, I love that. It just so explains what's going on right now, what this new cycle is, um, and, and all this Blue Bay energy, I think that really resonates throughout that message. And then the other thing that I have been guided to share with you is a very, very powerful prayer for getting through dark times, which we all are feeling. We're about to enter some dark times. Um, but but this is Psalm 23, okay? And it doesn't matter what religious background you may or may not have, the Psalms are ancient. Um, they're actually spells or incantations, and they're extremely powerful. And so in Psalm 23 is this beautiful prayer and incantation, it's magical, right? So you don't have to be part of any tradition to be able to use this and in, in invoke this protective energy. And um, if you don't like the word Lord, substitute creator, whatever you want, okay? Um, I'll read it to you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still, still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. 
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me in all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Okay, and it's just struck me, just now reading these two transmissions. They're both talking about the bounty of the earth and the abundance that is here for us. They're both talking about protecting and protection, right? And being strong through the darkness and holding that light, the dawning of the bright new age, right? We're here for that. It is here and we are actually the ones who are seeding it. Whatever you are doing to bring light into the world right now, to hold the light and to transmute darkness into light, that is seeding the new age of light into reality. Okay, so one more transition transmission that I want to share with you, and that is the second um, second portion of the Akashic message that I received. And this is really an instruction to how to move through this portal that we're moving into. At the time of the eclipse, it is enough to just be. Clear your space clear your time, make room. Dedicate yourself to being a vessel of light at this time. There's little you need to do, just keep yourself open. Allow the energy to move through you. It will energize you as well as the earth if you let it simply move through you. Keep yourself pure, eat pure, hold your mind on things that uplift you, think positive thoughts on behalf of yourself and others, you are so loved. Okay, so again, that idea of like the allow the energy to move through you, water off a duck's back, let it move through your mind, right? So our dark stuff may be coming at us. Just remember, you are light, we are light. And whatever dark stuff, as it moves through us, we become kind of like, you know, filters. It's like we become human dream catchers. But it's almost like the, the light, the blue light around us is the dream catcher. We're allowing the blue light to capture whatever, catch whatever darkness is coming through. And then we let our light shine through that, right? Uh, relinquish whatever is dark. Allow it to move through you. Give it over to the blue light. The blue light will sanitize it. The blue light will, uh, you know, just help to transmute that. And that's part of what this is about is whatever we're receiving from the ancestral realms that may be dark, allowing it to move through, allowing it to just kind of drift right through and the pineal becomes this, this cleansing thing, whatever dark is coming through and whatever light is there, it becomes amplified, right? And we become these seeds of light. All right, so if you would like to join me, in an eclipse ceremony and in a meditation right about very close to the time of the eclipse. Um, I'm doing a gathering of my free community for star seeds. It is a membership. It is does not cost anything to join or to attend, um, but we're going to be coming together and holding space, just being in community with others and that will be on April 19th. It's it's going to be quite late in the day, but it's when I was instructed and it turned out um that it's 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 within a couple hours of of the actual eclipse. So I'm gonna put the link to join that community in the description box. Um, and also just want to let you know that all of my original paintings right now this month, including Goddess Bridget, are on sale and that also a portion of Everything that I offer, both through my store and with sessions, is um, going to support the United Pegasus Foundation this month. If you've been thinking you want to do a session with me or thinking that you might want to pick up a print for Mother's Day or something, this is a really good time to do it. So thank you in advance if, if that's something you want to do. And remember, you were born to be free.